High tech is always coming at us a thousand miles an hour, like a meteor. And I'll be honest, I love it. We get to tell you about the inventors and innovators who are changing our world as we know it. But highest of tech isn't always the only way to get things done. Sometimes mixing low tech with a splash of high-ish tech can take a problem and MacGyver it into a low cost solution. Now there's one ballooning innovation that's taking low tech to new heights. Here's Albert Lawrence to explain. There is something magical and beautiful about watching kites soar in the air. And balloons have their own quiet, majestic quality. Kites require a good breeze to create lift, while balloons use hot air, or helium, a natural gas lighter than air, to carry them into the sky. And both have been used for centuries. This is Matthew Lippincott, and he's been working on a way to merge these two low-tech devices to give lift to a high-tech view. He calls it AirPup. I met up with him on a trip to Malibu, California. So Matthew, what is AirPup? AirPup is a balloon that flies like a kite, and so it has wings and it's stable in steady wind. When looking at the old world technology that was already there, what about that technology enabled you to do what you do right now? Kite balloons are still in use all over the world for lifting advertising banners or other things. And I thought no one had made a new design in more than 30 years. I went back and, and thought about some of the ways those balloons were designed and then went about designing a small model that one person could fly. And so now, what are the main uses of the AirPub? AirPub is, is quiet. And so if you're shooting video, one of the great things is you can fly it and listen to what's going on on the ground. You can hear the birds tweeting. You can hear people talking on the ground. Most of the people who purchase them from me are using them for communications, lifting radio antennas, or for lifting weather instruments. AirPup is also helpful for aerial map making. On the day we were taping, it was pretty windy, so I helped Matthew assemble the balloon. Now, uh, safety lines okay. is our next step. Safety lines. Safety lines are needed because winds that lift the balloon's wings to great heights also add strong force to its tether. Now that we've inflated this with helium, we can keep this balloon inflated for two to three days, depending on the weather. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was finally time to let the air pup fly. Let's give it, give it another shot, Lego. OK. I try to normally speed the balloon up, because the faster we kind of get it up there into the clearer wind, the better off we are. Oh, when you say speed the balloon up, just like let just, it go faster? Just let it go as fast as I can to okay. kind of get out of these, these, these like low altitude breezes. You can see now it's starting to hit those higher winds. Yeah. We decided to take the air pup to an open field and really let her go. What do you want air pup to eventually be able to do? My hope for air pup is that it can be a useful tool for scientists working in remote areas, offering a unique perspective that you can't get from any other device. It's, it's a joy every day to get an email from somebody who wants my balloon on the other side of the world. <laughs> wow. So air pup's going to continue to morph and mold depending on what people need. Exactly, yeah. <laughs>